thank you so much for this opportunity. And I just have to say one thing before we start. Um, so the women and the girls that you've seen here would be absolutely amazed if they knew that this many people in another country had an interest in their lives and what's happening to them. So thank you. All right, so I'm going to tell you about the 50 days I spent in the North Kivu region of the Democratic Republic of Congo. And I want to explain also our direct connection to the fighting that's happening there. And the most important thing for you to remember is that the situation cannot change without your support. Okay, so I had what I call my dream assignment after I had my enough moment where I had a nightmare that I was supposed to go to Congo. I woke up twisted in my sheets, covered in sweat, and not knowing how I would get into the country, I bought my ticket. And a few weeks later, I made the connection to Koperma, a Congolese nonprofit. They work with demobilized child soldiers, girl mothers, and rape survivors, and they go into rural communities offering workshops and trainings, um, microfinance, bread making, and sewing. So this is American humanitarian Amy Ernst, and she would go into these rural villages and set up interviews. And on one of the first interviews I attended with her, the women said, we'll talk to you, but you have to make us a promise. And the promise was that I would leave with their stories and, find, and tell everyone that I could find so the world would know the extent of their suffering. So you have to ask yourself, why have we not heard more about this? 5.4 million people equals the people within the city limits of Austin, Seattle, Los Angeles, and Portland wiped off the map. So it's an agrarian or an agricultural society, but it's also one of the most mineral rich resources in the world. And a UN panel of experts found the countries surrounding it claimed that they had gone in to recapture Rwandan genocideers but they'd actually gone in to pillage the resources and sell them out to the rest of the world. So there's a lot on here, but the important thing to know is the way that they get into our electronics, like our computers and our cell phones, is that they're sold by mafias into the world supply chain. They're, they're mixed in, and right now there's no transparency, so there's no way to distinguish where they're from. And then that money goes back to small arms proliferation and fighting. So one girl or woman is raped every 90 seconds. And this young girl, um, she fled her village in, with three sisters. They were all raped, and then when they were escaping again, they were raped two days later. And this is a really common story. These girls are alone, and they have no way to protect themselves. So 65% of the girls that are attacked are teenagers. And this woman is a similar story. She was in her home. She lives in soldier territory. They stole everything she owned, including her food supply. They raped her, and they left her naked. This is one of the few men that granted us an interview because people don't talk about rape, especially men. And he had to watch as um, soldiers attacked his wife, and there was nothing that he could do because they had guns. He was one of the good men that has actually stayed with his wife and supported her through this. So the big, the big diamond represents where Koperma's main center is, and then the smaller diamonds are their service areas where they have these little clinics set up. And it's such a big area, it would take us two to four hours in one direction just to get out to the center. <coughs> so the main problem is that the Congolese government is not accountable to its people. And it's fostered a system of corruption in which the security and justice sector has been totally cannibalized. So there's really no working institution without corruption. And often soldiers are seen as the perpetrators, but you know we found in these interviews they're just as much victims because a lot of times um, they're put into the military as children. They have no access to education. Most of them don't even know why they're fighting, and if they are able to escape or leave, there's no opportunity for them. So this is Goretti. She was raped by 10 soldiers, and then her daughter, Wari, is five. So she was 16 years old when this happened. She woke up in the hospital alone and afraid. 
And there is an entire generation of girls like her that are raising this fatherless generation, children born of rape that will never know their fathers. So it took us two weeks to get out to this village because there was no gas money, it was so remote. And this is a water source, um, so it's a path that girls and women walk multiple times a day. And by the time we walked it, a civilian had been hiding out there and had raped over 20 girls. And this is one of the girls. She was 15. She was terrified that um, she was pregnant, and we offered to take her for post-trauma care and to do a pregnancy test at the hospital. But she was so worried that the other kids would find out she refused to go. She didn't want to go. So a lot of these young girls, like I mentioned, there's no one whose job it is to protect them. And they're at risk every day as they go about these daily activities they have to do to survive, to get water, to get firewood. And you know, if you're approached by a man with a gun, there's nothing that you're going to be able to do to stop them. And why is it your job? Because no one else is doing it. There's no agency whose mandate it is to help these girls. And as a consumer of technology, we have to make people aware that we are no longer willing to do business at this cost. So it literally comes down to you and you and you if you want this to change. So please visit the website. It's thetruthtold.com. And on the resources page, you can click these buttons. And there are action links. They'll take you one to three minutes each. And as well, you can share them across social media. So you can leverage this through your personal network, share it over email and Facebook to just start to generate a conversation. So this is Waridi, and she's the future of Congo. And every time you use your cell phone, I want you to literally remember that you have her future in your hands. So if you could just visit our website and share it with everyone you know, I'd greatly appreciate it to, con to continue to generate the conversation. And then also, um, I'm taking donations for Koparama, and I have a sign-up sheet in the back.